Hey guys, how's it going? Today I am, as I said in the last video, without my desktop. And so I decided I would make a video that I've been putting off for a long time. I'm gonna show you guys my physical music collection. I've got a lot of stuff. I've got a lot of vinyl records, a couple CDs, and a couple tapes. And I'm just gonna show them all to you guys right now. Baby. This is my favorite record. <laughs> okay, so first I'm gonna start with the stuff that's not records because that makes it easier, I guess. That's the easiest, it's on top. So I've got two tapes here. I've got Origami Angels Gen 3. This is an EP that they made in 2019, I think? Yeah. Yeah, this is Origami Angels 2019 EP. It's really good and I highly recommend it. I actually am going to have it on vinyl very soon. It's just on its way to me from Counterintuitive Records. Um, but I got the tape release when they did that. This is the XD Gale of Darkness edition, which just means it's a black tape. Kind of a cop out if you ask me, but it's nice, it's pretty, it's pretty cool. I like it. And this is Mom Jeans's, Mom, Mom Jeans's? This is the Mom Jeans album, Puppy Love. Uh, it comes on a red cassette here. Nothing too fancy. Pretty cool though. I like it. It's a great album. Um, I used to not like it as much as their first album, Best Buds, but now I kind of think it's better. I've been listening to Mom Jeans since right before Pu Puppy Love came out, and so once it did come out, I was like, whoa, this is so cool. They just came out with new music, this new band that I like, and this album's great. So I've got it on tape. So, uh, next thing, I've got a CD, I've got a couple CDs here that were completely random picks. These are not albums that I knew about before I got them, but they're both kind of cool in their own right. So this one, in the normal jewel case, is, uh, Cough by Black Eyes. It's a weird jazz punk thing, um, there's a lot of really, like, noodly saxophone shit going on in this, and it's just crazy. It's like a cacophony of noise without actually being like noise music. It's wild. Um, I don't even know if I recommend it. It's pretty good, but it's a hard listen for me at least. Um, but it was two dollars or something at Amoeba Records in Hollywood. Um, and so I went there and I picked up a random CD because someone told me to, and I got this. The other one here is a little bit more interesting. We've got Long Live Artificial by The Shotgun Wedding. This is the only album that they released. Um, it was released on vinyl, um, 600 were made, and then there were 500 of these cardboard fold-packed CDs made. This album was never released digitally. I think it came out in 2003 or 2004. Um, it's just like a, a punk hardcore band from Southern California, um, and I found it at a Goodwill in Santa Clarita, um, and it just looked cool, and it sounded cool, and I opened it up and found the lyrics sheet, um, and it looked really weird and cool, and so this is what made me buy this, and it was like six dollars at this Goodwill. Um, and I'm happy I did. I ripped it. I actually have it on this YouTube channel, since there's not a digital record of it anywhere. But, um, yeah, pretty cool stuff. Um, okay, so I've got one little seven inch here. This is Pool, The Kids Are Dead. This is, um, the, there's a band called Pool Kids. Um, they're like an emo band. Uh, they don't make Screamo at all, but this is their Screamo EP. It's just two songs, front and back, um, called Bloom and Teething. Bloom is an amazing song. I love it so much. I could listen to it forever. So anyway, yeah, pool, pool kids, good stuff. Um, let's see, let's just start on the others here. I'm gonna say some special stuff about the ones that I'm not happy to own up top, and then we will move forward with the ones that I like. This is Yarn by McCafferty. Do not listen to this album. Don't, don't go Google it. I mean, you can Google it, but don't click on any of their links. Don't listen to it on Spotify. Do not listen to this album because uh, the lead singer of the band, uh, Nick Hartkop, is um, a really shitty guy, uh, legitimately abusive to many of his friends and bandmates um, and past partners. Uh, really not good stuff. I bought this before all of that was brought to light. I've actually seen McCafferty in concert before then as well. 
Um, and it was a really fun time, so I'm really sad to say that this is not something you should listen to. Um, I have it on vinyl, so if I ever want to hear it, I can do it without supporting him directly. But, you know, don't give any money or, or vocal support to this band at this time. It's my recommendation. The next one is sort of the same deal. I've got the McCafferty Heart Attack Man Split uh, album. This is my partner's copy of it. Again, the Heart Attack Man section of this, Heart Attack Man is a great band. They're awesome. Go listen to them. Uh, their section of this split, their two songs, 99% um, and 100 milligrams, are on Spotify as its own album. So look up Heart Attack Man and you will find those songs as their own two song EP instead of as a split with McCafferty. So I've got a few albums that I don't actually like, uh, not because they are made by bad people, but because I just bought them because they looked weird at a record store and I didn't end up liking them. So here's the three of those. We've got this terrible album from it doesn't say a year, but a long time ago, it's very old, called Monkey Monkey Bars or Eggplant. I don't even know who the artist is. It's don't, it's not good. I don't even remember what it sounds like. I just know I don't like it. Um, the other one is absolutely learns to love mistakes. Um, looks cool. Isn't actually music that I particularly like. Last one is Dying is Fun by Everyone is Dirty, which is like, I think, if I remember correctly, like a female-led punk band from Oakland. Um, they're okay. I don't even know this album. I just bought it. Don't do that. It's useless. We have a signed copy of Casual Friday's Weekend Forever. This was signed by uh, Zach Miller from Casual Friday, the person in the picture there, um, at their show at the Echo with Mom Jeans, King of Heck, and someone else, I think, um, in March of 2019. It's pretty sick, it's a great show, it's a great album. I have my own copy, but I won't be showing it because this is the signed one, it's cool. Go listen to them, it's great. Next up here on top of the stack is Death of Spring by For Your Health and Shin Guard. This is a split album by two really great small screamo bands um, from the Midwest, I'm pretty sure. They're great. My favorite song on this album is Keres, Keres, I don't know how you pronounce it, K-E-R-E-S by For Your Health. Um, it's a great fucking song. If you listen to anything uh, that I recommend in this video, listen to that, unless I say the same phrase again, in which case also listen to whatever that is. Great stuff. And the album cover is cool as shit. Look at that lightning. Awake But Still In Bed. Um, let me see if I can say the name of this album without looking on the side of the cover. What people call low self-esteem is really just seeing yourself the way other people see you. What people call low self-esteem is really just seeing yourself the way that other people see you. I was close! Um, this is an amazing album. This is the only stuff that's been released by Awake But Still In Bed up to this point, but I know they're working on LP2 right now. Um, oh my god, this album is amazing. Um, really hits me real hard. Uh, <laughs> it's very emotionally charged. Um, it's sort of screamy, almost lo-fi, but not with like lo-fi vibes emo, um, made by a woman named Shannon who lives in San Jose. Um, it's really great stuff. I highly, highly, highly recommend this album. And the vinyl, I won't show off most of them, uh, but the vinyl for this one is clear and black, and that's cool as hell. Next up, Donovan Wolfington, How to Treat the Ones You Love. This is such an amazing album. I'm gonna take it out of the little clear cover here so you can see the album art because it's really faded on purpose. This is just a great album. It's, I don't really know how to describe music very well. Hey Ocean is, uh, this is a double LP, which is really cool from indie pop band Hey Ocean. They are Canadian. This album is from 2012. Um, notable thing about this band is that the lead singer, Ashley Ball, is one of the voice actresses for My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, and related properties, um, as well as a few other things cartoon related, but I only know her from that. I used to be hugely into My Little Pony, as you probably know if you've been subbed to me since 2015 or before. 
Um, and so I looked up the band that she was in, and I still like the band, and I don't like the show anymore, so this was a good idea to look up. Um, I don't listen to this very often. I don't listen to Hey Ocean very often, but um, it's still a really good album. Their newer stuff is more poppy, more radio-friendly, but it's still really fun, and I highly recommend checking it out. Next up, two Just Friends albums. Both Just Friends albums, I should say. Rock to the Rhythm and Nothing But Love. This is a 2015 release, although this particular one is the repress. And this is Just Friends' Nothing But Love. This is the counterintuitive pressing before they went to uh, Pure Noise Records last year. So um, you'll see this you'll see this album in record shops. I've seen it in like three or four different record stores. Um, and lots of places online. It's very available. This album is what got them big. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with the Sad Summer Tour, but Just Friends played on the Sad Summer Tour, and that got them really big and got them signed, and it was a big deal. And uh, this is the album that did it. Amazing stuff. Highly recommend both of these albums. There's a song on this album called Ryerson um, that I have sung on stage with this band, um, which is pretty fucking cool. Uh, I went to see them in Fresno, uh, in September, and I got to sing Ryerson on stage with them. So, uh, I mean, I can't like a band more than that, can I? They're probably my favorite band. Just Friends is amazing. We've got a big boy. We've got Prince Daddy and the Hyenas, Cosmic Thrill Seekers. This is specifically, uh, th this all looks from the outside to be the exact same as any vinyl that you'll get of this album. Uh, it's always a double LP. It's always big and cool and has this 3D stuff in here. But this specifically is the 420 2019 uh, late night special release uh, that you could only get by going to Counterintuitive's web store on 420 last year and purchasing an album without even knowing what it was. This album was not announced yet, but I bought it anyway. And you get this special splatter variant. So this is probably kind of rare. Uh, there's only a hundred of them in the world, and two of them are in this room right now. Uh, because I also got one, or my partner also got one, on the same night. So, um, similarly to this, it also came with a t-shirt that says Cosmic Thrill Seekers on it. This shirt, if you ever see someone wearing this shirt, you know that they really love Prince Daddy and the Hyena, and you should say hi to them. It might even be me. Next up is Oso Oso's Real Stories of True People Who Kind of Looked Like Monsters. This is a really great album from Oso Oso. Um, a lot more people found out about them after the release of their newest album, Basking in the Glow, last year. Um, and that's a great album. It's good stuff. Um, this is my favorite work of theirs, personally. But Oso Oso's getting bigger and bigger, and I would recommend, if you want to, like, get a taste of what their music is going to be like going forward, go listen to their single Impossible Game, which is from Basking in the Glow. If you want to know my picks from this album, I really like Where You've Been Hiding and How It Happened. Those are two really, really great songs, um, mostly because I related to them during a certain point in my life where I first heard this record, but anyway, good stuff. Mom Jeans, Best Buds. Um, I have a copy of this, my partner has a copy of this. Both of them are warped. <laughs> They're both the olive green variant, which would be funny since my name is Olive. Avery, you can't go in the closet right now. Locked for baby. Um, but they're both warped, so they sound really weird when you play them. But I still really like this album, so we both own it. The reason we both own it is because I bought this. It was warped. I asked for a replacement copy, they sent one to me, and it was also warped, so I gave it to my partner. Now we both have one, and we live together. I've got two broken copies of this album. All right, and the last one in this stack, I've still got a whole other stack to go through. The last one in this stack is Joyce Manor, Of All Things I Will Soon Grow Tired. Um, this is a really great album. It's like 12 and a half minutes long. Um, Joyce Manor, legendary fucking punk, pop punk, emo band. Um, great stuff. They are so good live. They hold, their music holds up at any point in time for me. I could be sleeping, you could put on Joyce Manor and wake me up and I would be happy about it. Um, this album in particular is probably my favorite, which is why this is the only album of theirs that I personally bought on vinyl. The rest of that we have belong to my partner. Um, but they're all great. This is really, really good stuff. Love it. This one is Young Lean, Stranger. I am a huge Sad Boys Strain Gang fan, uh, which sounds really awful to say out loud. Um, 
But I've got the black variant, unfortunately not the red and black splatter variant, of Young Lean's Stranger right here. This album was hugely important to me in 2017 when it came out. Um, this is the album that got me into Young Lean, Blade, etc. Um, it is just outstanding. It is an amazing listen. It's an exploration of problems with mental health told through the eyes of someone who has a lot of money and drugs and no one to check his feelings. Um, and I think it's just a really, really beautifully produced album. If you want just top shelf, extreme quality cloud rap, listen to this album. All right, we've got The Weaker Than's Construct or Reconstruction Site. This is an album from, I think, the early 2000s by the band The Weaker Than's. They're really cool. I really like this album, but I bought this for my partner for Valentine's Day? Christmas? Something in the last six to nine months. Uh, I think Christmas, because this is like one of their favorite albums ever. They knew about this album before they met me, before they liked any music made by bands other than this album and a few select others that were popular on like Instagram a long time ago. Um, so this is important to them, and so I bought it for them, but it's a great album, highly recommend. Natural Everyday Degradation by Remo Drive. This is a really, really good album that has to grow on you. Um, when this album came out, Remo Drive fans, including myself, were not really happy with the sound. It was too polished, a little too clean, not punk enough, didn't have enough energy. Um, but now I really love this album. Recommendations would probably be um, Separate Beds, The Grind, and Around the Sun. Um, it's a lot of jams. It's a lot of really fun to sing jams. Listen to this in the car with someone that you like and sing it. Learn the words. Sing it. It will make you happier. Next up, we got a 7-inch of Prince Daddy and the Hyenas' Adult Summers. This album is really short, really good. Um, I'm a Bum is one of my favorite Prince Daddy songs overall. It is great. Um, I should probably get a vinyl of I Thought You Didn't Even Like Leaving to complete the, the look, uh, the collection. But this is great stuff. Go listen to this. The catchiest one is Hidden Track. Um, but my favorite is I'm a Bum, and the whole thing is great. Next up, we have Ska Tune Network's Pick It The Fuck Up. This is a collaboration between Ska YouTuber, musician, uh, Ska Tune Network, and Counterintuitive Records. This is a an album of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10 Ska covers of songs by bands that release their music through Counterintuitive Records. Um, so I would recommend this. It's great. It's a little cheesy. It's a little corny. It doesn't really hold up for me very well because I'm not the hugest ska fan. But if you like musicians that release on Counterintuitive Records, listen to these ska covers because you have nothing better to do. It's on Spotify. Amy knows. She listens to ska. Right, Avery? Yes. Puppy Love, Mom Jeans. I already talked about this one. We have it on vinyl as well as the tape. Nothing else to say. And then we have a trifecta of Joyce Manor records. We have Cody, we have their self-titled, and we have Million Dollars to Kill Me. Um, these are all really, really good albums. Go and listen to Joyce Manor. I already said um, it's great. If you go to Cody, which is, I know I said that of all things is my favorite Joyce Manor album, but Cody is really my favorite Joyce Manor album. I was just saying words. Um, listen to Stairs. This song is touching. I cry when I see it live. I cry when I hear it. Um, I love, love Stairs. Love this album. Love all of these albums. Love all of these albums <laughs> because they're fucking awesome. Support musicians by vinyl. Um, be a little bit of a hipster because it's not 2012 and no one's going to judge you anymore. Use Reddit. Use Twitter. Go and talk to someone. Talk to me. Comment. Tell me things. Join Facebook fan groups. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. I love you and I hope you have a really great day.